In this lecture, I'll wrap up the section by covering the best practices for VMware vSphere on ONTAP storage. Best practices are covered in the NetApp Technical Report, TR4597. That's VMware vSphere with ONTAP. And most of the best practices that I'm going to be talking about in this lecture come directly from that technical report. It includes general best practices. So other configurations may be more suitable in your environment, depending on your particular workloads. But in general, these are the settings that you're going to want to go with. First up, use VSC, the Virtual Storage Console, to manage vSphere with ONTAP because it provides a single integrated admin interface. It is a NetApp plugin that plugs into VMware vSphere and it allows you to manage your ONTAP storage for vSphere from the vSphere client. This gives you ease of administration. It supports policy-based management and it also supports standard procedures. So because of this, there's gonna be less mistakes and it's gonna require less troubleshooting. It also allows you to push best practice settings to your ESXi hosts, and it monitors that those settings are still configured. So if somebody changes those settings by accident somehow, it's gonna give you an alert so you'll know about it and you can set them back. Also, if you're gonna be using VVols, it, you need to use VSC for the VVol data store provisioning. Use the NetApp interoperability matrix to confirm compatibility between software versions. So the version of vSphere you're running, the version of ESXi running on your hosts, and the version of ONTAP running on your storage should all be compatible with each other. It's an interoperability matrix that you can check to check that they are. Install NFS VAAI plugin on ESXi hosts if you're using NFS for your data stores. Install the guest OS scripts on your virtual machine guests, or at least VMware tools on them. Enable the VASA provider. That is enabled by default in the latest version of VSC. And register on-command API services with VASA provider if using VVols so that you can see the VVOL dashboard and reports. Should you use traditional data stores or VVOLs? I spoke earlier in the section about how there's been a slow uptake of VVOLs and the reasons for that, but VVOLs provide virtual disk granular storage. They provide enhanced features such as VMware managed NetApp snapshot copies, and they support adaptive QoS. Those are things that you don't get with traditional data stores, so you should definitely have a look at implementing VVOLs in your environment. Also, the storage protocol choice. You can use NFS or you can use any SAN protocol with VMFS for your vSphere data stores. NetApp testing has shown little performance difference between the different protocols. Considerations for which protocol you, you'll use are the current storage infrastructure and staff skills. So what are you using for any existing storage already? Is that going over IP or fiber channel, for example, and the cost of any upgrades? So if right now you are using maybe NAS protocols for your home folders, et cetera, then it, you're probably gonna use NAS if you then roll out VMware after that as well because if you were gonna use fiber channel instead, you'd have to upgrade the hardware in your network and you'd also have to train your staff in it. It would be easier to use the existing ethernet network and NFS if that's what you were using already. So that is the official line from NetApp that you can use any protocol that you want to and it doesn't really affect performance. But if you read that technical report, you'll see that it does gently nudge you towards using NFS. So some of the benefits of using NFS, when you do use NFS, ONTAP has awareness of VMDK files. You don't get that with traditional SAN data stores, but if you're using VVOLs, then you still do get it also with SAN as well. Provisioning can be easier on an NFS NIC than an HBA, because it's easier to configure and less likely to require firmware management. Thin provisioning, deduplication, and cloning return savings immediately, 
which can make capacity management easier and volumes can be easily shrunk or grown. With SAN protocols, they can only be easily grown, not shrunk. So again, it's your choice of protocol, but now I do gently nudge you towards using NFS. Let's talk about data store sizing next. Larger data stores can benefit storage efficiency. Uh, because obviously when your storage efficiency is working at the volume level, the more stuff, the more data that you've got in that volume allows you to deduplicate more of it. However, aggregate level deduplication on AFF alleviates the impact of this. And with VMware, you will typically get really good deduplication savings because you're going to have typically lots of virtual machines which are going to be similar. For example, lots of virtual machines which are running the same operating system and also running the same applications. If they are all in the same volume, so the same data store, the same volume, and you're going to get really good deduplication there. If you do have them in different volumes, then if you're using aggregate level deduplication and those volumes are in the same aggregate, then again, you'll get the good deduplication again. Larger data stores also provide easier management because there's less of them. So with less data stores to manage, it's easier to manage them. Still talking about data store sizing, consider using at least four data stores or volumes if you're using VVOLs to store your VMs on a single ONTAP controller to get maximum performance from the hardware resources. This approach also allows you to establish data stores with different recovery policies. So you could have some backed up or replicated more frequently than others. So we said that it's good to have less data stores and make them larger on the previous slide, but you do want to have at least four data stores. The data store recommended size is between four and eight terabytes. That size is a good balance point for performance, ease of management and data protection. It's big enough to hold lots of virtual machines, but small enough to recover quickly in case of a disaster. Enable auto size to automatically grow and shrink the volume as use space changes. If you're using VSC, then auto size is enabled by default. For workloads which require a large data store, so again, on the previous slide, we said that the recommended data store size is four to eight terabytes. But if in your particular environment, you've got a workload there that requires a larger data store than that. Well, NFS data stores can be up to 100 terabytes in size. VMFS data stores can be up to 64 terabytes in size. If SAN is a requirement, the ONTAP maximum LUN size is 16 terabytes. Therefore, a maximum size VMFS data store of 64 terabytes is created by spanning across four separate 16 terabyte LUNs. While there can be performance benefits for high O workloads with multiple LUNs, this benefit is offset by added management complexity and also availability risk. So NetApp generally recommend using a single large LUN for each data store and only span if there's a special need to go beyond a 16 terabyte data store. So again, to summarize that, recommended data store size is four to eight terabytes. If you do need to use larger than that, then you can get larger size data stores with NFS. 100 terabytes in size with NFS. VMFS data stores can be up to 64 terabytes in size. Again, the maximum size of a LUN is 16 terabytes. It's not recommended to go above that 16 terabyte size unless in your particular environment, the requirement is to have a large data store and you also have to have a SAN protocol. In that case, then you could span it across multiple LUNs, but that's not generally the recommended way to do it. Next up, storage efficiency. And as you'll see here, everything is pretty much just at the default. If you're using AFF, then you're gonna use adaptive inline compression inline deduplication, backline deduplication, and inline data compaction have all of those enabled. Also enable aggregate level deduplication. If you're using flash pool on FAS, then use adaptive inline compression, inline deduplication, background deduplication, and inline de data compaction have all of those enabled. And if you're using a hard disk drive aggregate on FAS, if it is a primary workload that requires higher performance, then use just background deduplication. For secondary workloads, use adaptive inline compression, adaptive background compression, 
inline deduplication, background deduplication, and inline data compaction. Thin provisioning is the default for, and it's recommended for on tap NFS volumes. And thin provisioned VMDKs from the vSphere side are also generally recommended depending on the application. If using SAN, thin provisioned ones are recommended in order to see the benefits of deduplication, and ones are recommended to be created in thin provisioned volumes, which are two times the size of the one. We spoke about that earlier in the storage efficiency section. For networking, use a dedicated network for storage traffic. You don't have any other traffic on that particular network. ESXi hosts and the SVM lifts on the ONTAP side should be on the same IP subnet. So the storage traffic does not pass through a router. It's going directly between the ESXi hosts and the SVM lifts. Also follow general networking best practice, such as redundant paths and one lift per node per SVM. If you're using NFS as a protocol, then use FlexVol volumes for the NFS data stores, not Q3s or Flex groups. And all ESXi hosts mounting an NFS data store must use the same protocol, NFS version 3 or version 4.1. If you've got hosts using different protocols connecting into the same data store, it can corrupt the data store. So make sure that does not happen. You can use host profiles in VMware to ensure that. For backup, this stuff is all pretty much common sense. Back up your vSphere environment, obviously. You can use Snap Center to do that. Redundancy should be provided for the VSC virtual machine through the standard vSphere high availability or fault tolerant features. The, v the VSC runs as a virtual machine and you can use VMware's built-in high availability or fault tolerance to provide redundancy for that virtual machine. Nothing special about it. It just works the standard way that it always does in VMware. Information in VSC and the VASA provider can change frequently. So take snapshots at least every hour and obviously retain snapshots for enough time to discover any problems and also resolve them. And finally, some general best practices Use a guest-owned file system or RDM, raw device mapping, if that is recommended for the guest application. If enabling encryption, use NetApp, not vSphere encryption. And the storage distributed resource scheduler, DRS, should be set to manual if enabled. What that does is it automatically rebalances your virtual machines across the available data stores. But if you allow that to be running automatically, then moves could lose efficiency benefits and lock space and snapshot copies. So either have it disabled, or if you do have it turned on, have it set to manual so that you can check any moves before they actually occur. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with NetApp storage for free on your laptop, then you can download my free ebook, which you can see above my head right now. Also check out my NetApp Storage Complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.